We're now talking to Vaughn Phoenix from Punk Black. Why don't you tell me about the origin of Punk Black? Oh, um, it's crazy. Punk Black actually started as just house parties. Uh, we threw one house party as like a one-off because we were trying to, our, our band Howling Star that started Punk Black, we were trying to like garner vo votes for Afropunk at the time. But after throwing the show, we realized like people really, really needed it. Like the, the scene really, really needed it. We got a lot of good responses from people like, thank you for doing this. Thank you, the Atlanta scene really needs this. And we were like, oh shit, this is something that we've needed the entire time. Uh, is it loud enough? Um, could we move back a little bit here? I'm sorry. Okay. It seems that, you know, Afro, so you were trying to get enough votes for Afro Punk, but, and Punk Black was, became more of an ongoing thing. Do you want to elaborate more on that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it started off as like a one-off show um, called Punk Black. We had no intention to keep going. We had no intention to do like monthly shows or anything like that. But after the response, we realized it was something that we've been looking for the entire time. Um, you know, we've been playing on the scene in Atlanta for about 10 years, but there was no sort of movement for people of color in the rock music scene. And Afropunk, you know, sort of had left that center, you know, for us. It used to be that way when we were younger, but they stopped doing it. They went to sort of mainstream, which is fine. But, you know, they no longer really, really supported rock music. So we decided to step in and do that because that's what the scene needed. And, um... With that, in Atlanta, are there, did you find a lot of other um, African-American punk and metal fans? Oh, yeah. Like, like tons of them. Like, way more than we ever thought there would be. Um, our network started off before bands started, you know, because bands break up over a period of time. So our band network in Atlanta generally stays around 30 bands. You know, they all have their individual fan bases. So you can sort of do the math for that one. Tell me about some of the things that Punk Black has done in the ever since then um, ever since then we broke out into more nerd lore um, type things just since like the black experience as far as like you know us being into like kung fu anime and everything growing up it felt like it connected to the cosplay scene and the anime scene really well and it did so we broke off into doing more features on like things involving nerd lore more cosplayers you know things like that because you mentioned on your website you know blurred that it's also a community of blurred mm -hmm, exactly and in, also in different cities. Oh yeah, uh, currently our main cities are Oakland, New York, I'm going as far as Brooklyn, Chicago, Miami, Denver, and um, of course Atlanta. I'm wondering if you ever have African American music fans you, like come up and say they've been inspired by you. Oh yeah, definitely. It's, it's actually a really, really nice and sort of like humbling experience. It sort of brings us back down because, you know, um, after, after a while of doing punk black it's real easy to like sit on like a small tiny lofty tower and sort of like okay you know this experience is the same but we're actually like touching different people like you know people who are just getting out of high school and needed something to like really really correlate with and like really really grow with same thing for people who are like in their 40s 50s you know like it has like a wide range of community people also tend to forget first of all that african americans founded rock and roll and some of the most important figures, like Jimi Hendrix, have been African American. Why do you think rock suddenly became seen as more white-dominated when black people were obviously the founders of this form? I feel like it was more like, I want to say like a media attack, but I'm sound dramatic, but it basically was sort of a media attack. We started rock music, but a lot of um, white bands in you know back in the day were influenced by black rock musicians or black blues musicians. You know, of course, you know, black people never really get their flowers with a lot of different things. People of color never really get their flowers as far as the things they've done. So for a while, it was pushed, you know, it's like white cis men were like the main dominators of, of this music scene because they felt like, you know, they, they sort of owned it. So the media sort of pushed that. And unfortunately, the black community, you know, the people of color community, we also sort of accepted that same narrative. And we, we also told ourselves, it's like, hey, we're not really a part of this. You know, this isn't really us, but that wasn't true. So I feel like right now we're sort of like rediscovering that and you know, putting that back together. I'm reminded, for instance, of speaking of punk rock, Holly Styrene, who doesn't have... Have you heard of her? Oh, yeah, yeah. Who for years didn't get... The They're on the table. Res no table. Was so was overlooked, and she was one of the founders of British punk rock. I'm sorry, can you repeat that question real quick? I was trying to make sure they were good. Sorry. I uh, like, people, you look at punk rock, and I think 
I agree with you there. People overlook people like polystyrene or the Bad Brains, who are certainly important figures in punk. Oh, yeah, completely. Um, if there's, of course, both of them definitely need their flowers, but a lot of times I feel so bad for, for the Bad Brains because, you know, if they were, you know, if they were a Green Day or if they were like a Sex Pistols or something like that, you know, they, they would have like, again, more flowers, more money. There was a couple of years ago, like the guitar player had to start a GoFundMe because he didn't have health insurance to pay for some sort of surgery he had. And this is like a legendary guitar player from a legendary punk band. You know, these bands are just getting like overlooked, you know, and a lot of them are just, just getting discovered by people now. Like, you know, death didn't, didn't get discovered until like much, much years later as far as like a, being a band. So I think it's just going to take more time and more organizations like Punk Black and more people who like follow Punk Black to sort of give these people their flowers to, to sort of like, you know, follow these bands and push them. And that's like, that's monetarily and, you know, that's as far as sharing them as well. What sort of plans does Punk Black have like in, for the future of your organization? Right now, um, it's sort of got put in place on the background a little bit because we got a little busy with touring, but right now we're trying to start a network studio um, where we'll shoot our own content as far as like cosplay, music, ev you know, everything. Um, we're trying to have like a standalone studio. It'll be a community space too where rock bands and, you know, cosplayers and other like um, people of color can come in for like a, a far, far discounted price than they would at like these, these other major companies and everything like that. But that's our, our next big project. Okay. Well, thank you.